gitu Hello everyone, hi and welcome back to our Shaolin Talks. Um, thank you so much for joining us again. My name is Martine Niven. I'm Janine Brower. And we have a special guest with us called Matt Playford. Hi. <laughs> so Matt is a very well-renowned uh, well um, music producer, um, but he's also here uh, for a different reason, because today we're going to be exploring um, about how to grow your own food. Um, and Matt is a little bit of an expert in uh, growing lots of different types of food, and especially growing chilies. <laughs> so um, we're just going to be chatting about um, our experiences growing food, giving you some really good tips on how, if you've never grown your own food before, how to go about that, um, why it's so good, and it's got so many amazing health benefits. And we're just going to explore these with, with you today. So. Hello, Matt. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, Hi. thanks for joining us. Yeah, so um, we, um, we feel really inspired um, by the farming, uh, by organic, particularly organic farming culture at the moment, um, because we realize that um, some of the farming methods that are used at the moment are kind of not very sustainable, um, and feel like we might want to you know, do something that, that makes a difference um, and uh, maybe do some organic farming ourselves. Organic farming is kind of the use of not using fertilizers or pesticides or GMs. Um, and as a result of that, we are not using as many chemicals, not putting those chemicals into our body, um, making the produce much fresher for us, um, and also very extremely good for the environment. So, um, there are so many ways that you can um, understand food, yeah, and get in touch with food and be in, at natural and uh, nat at nature with food, and it brings so many, so many different health benefits, um, which is what we're going to explore now, all the way through from helping the environment, encouraging wildlife, um, nourishing <coughs> the soil, um, making the environment sustainable, um, and generally, kind of looking at your and improving your mental health and well-being and you can take really simple methods to do that you don't have to you know um, suddenly start up a farm somewhere and then do like some you know like small steps yeah, yeah just small steps little changes that you can take control over your food and um, and uh, yeah we're just going to explore these um, these methods with you today so Janine yeah what do you well, think about all of this? I, I, I love it. I mean, at the moment, for me personally, I, I really like um, if people kind of grow their own food. If you, mm. um, I know my grandparents grow their own food, my, my parents kind of slightly. But then I grew up in a city, you know, I always grew up in a city and it was always like everything's there. Mm. Um, but um, obviously now we... I live in a flat now as well, so you have limited space, but we have, at the moment, we have like a little planter outside my house and we started kind of doing our own herbs and right. so on. So, but I think we, we really would like to grow this as well. So, um, yeah, no, I'm all up for yeah. like grow your own tomatoes, your beans, your whatever. Yeah. So yeah. I'm quite interested to, to see what we explore today. My, um, my experience is I, I never had green fingers. And just <laughs> recently, um, I've, obviously during the lockdown, you have a lot of time to yourself and you have a lot mm. of time to think about things and, and everything kind of slows down. And I think during that time, I had a real... Uh, 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 opportunity to go out into nature and kind of really get a connection with the environment and with with the plants around me um, and from that really grew a deep sense of connection and um, so my my experience of, um, of plants is very very new and um, 
and uh, I just want to uh, <laughs> see what you guys think. I've only just started growing food, so I've grown like some runner beans and some corn on the cob, and yeah, very very basic things and stuff on my window uh, but you haven't shelf. Tried it yet. I haven't tried it yet, and this is the first time. But I know Matt, you are quite experienced at growing. Could yeah, kind of. Yeah. What, what's your What's your journey? Um, um, and can well, you tell started, me a little about it? I started about um, seven years ago, seven eight years ago. Um, and I've always had in my mind that we should be growing our own food, where that's gone to I should be growing my own food. Right, um, okay. And it was quite simply as planting, I had a dead plant on my windowsill, and then a, a, a live chilli plant. One night I picked one of the chilies off, opened it up, the seeds into yeah. the soil, run it under the tap, forgot about it, and within about five or six days I had a little and I was like, oh, oh okay. So cool. <laughs> All right, so then I, I did that a couple of times again. So next year I had 20 plants. And then I went out um, and sourced some uh, of the odder chili plants that look more all ornamental but are too, mm. still totally functional for cooking. And um, did that exact same thing. And then the year after that, there was about 300 plants. What? Oh, I mean, <laughs> Three, literally. 300? Yeah, it's a big space like that. So where, where, is, where is your space? Where do you but practice? It's on, it's on the south coast, but it's in um, a family business. But it's, it's classed as urban farming because everything's put in pots. Oh, right, okay. Much the same as where we are now. It's okay. like I've converted a car park into uh, a that's, little farm so it's all that's got amazing. little pots and then we've got the the deeper pots for the bigger ones um and then i've got a raised bed um to put the peppers in and i've got corn as well about the length of, of the blue uh, mat um <laughs> but they do about 40 different types of chilies yeah so some more ornamental some are uh, more particular for culinary yeah um, applications so to speak and some of them go to, the peppers go to pubs as starters. Right, okay. Um, and then obviously the rest of it I've cooked kale, or sorry, um, grown kale, potatoes, carrots, um, quite a few, lots of different types of salad, leeks. Wow. Um, cauliflowers, Roman secco. Did, have you always had green fingers? Have you no, always been connected to plants? I, I've, I, my granddad, uh, like all, all our granddads or grandparents, it seems mm. like that's what we did, so we sort mm. of, uh, we were just saying that we're kind of like the first two generations in the last 5,000 years that don't have the obvious connection like mm. we should be growing. Yeah. It's like it, how everybody drives a car, we should all be growing. Yeah. It should I, be as, as it should be na as it's natural, yeah, isn't it? natural as that. And it's just, I, f I find it quite a shame, like, for example, um, talking uh, with a friend and they were saying that they went to a supermarket and they're walking around the supermarket and the children were just pointing at different vegetables and pointing at what was avocado like oh what's that yeah. or I don't know what that is what is that or what is that that's that's a tomato you know yeah. literally like you don't know what the food is yeah, you know there's no education there they need yeah. to know where their food is coming from and this is our future you know because yeah, if you you know to, to be able to eat is like a primal it's a primal need, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. And to understand that, you know, is really yeah. important. Yeah, I think because um, everything is mass produced, mm. there's a lot less uh, love. I mean, uh, there's a word that people use, and it's foodie. Foodie, so yeah, I've heard that. Someone, I mean, it's a bit of a strange term because we all have to eat, so we're all technically foodies. Yeah. But then there's people that take so much passion and pride into the creative process mm. of cooking the food, I'm yeah. the complete opposite. I've never been that person. Not to say that I just eat junk food, because I don't, um, yeah. but I've never been that passion about food. So passion, what, what inspired you then to, to, to do all about, of this? Take, about, take about, back a little bit of um, control uh, in, okay. in, in my own surroundings to be more sustainable. Um, wow, okay. I mean, for me, I'd like to live with creating my own energy and creating my own food and then start from that once I've sorted that bit out yeah. and then mm. I think we can move on and do the other things our hearts desires. I think that should be the first thing now. It's like uh, being a bit self-sufficient as well. You yeah. don't, yeah. you don't, it's kind of 
everything you can, you can, you know how to do, you know how to build, and you know to how to you don't grow. Get yeah. Bills every month from corporations that don't care about you. Mm. <laughs> it, it's, it's not just like the hippie yeah. side of it. It's yeah. like. There are so many. There are so many benefits um, to to learning about mm. food and it does growing take time, food. Though. I think it, it, although I think you'll be surprised how quickly it works mm. and in how much you get in such a small space. Is your is your space is it uh, is it organic? Yeah, the, the well, it, it can't be classed technically as organic because I've converted a car park. Oh <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, the organic society would have kittens. <laughs> But right, it's okay. as organic in the process. Yeah, that okay. I don't, I've never used any pesticides. Yeah, um, okay. You can introduce... Um, I mean, the chilli plants, their, their main enemy is, is aphids. Yeah, uh, okay. And then you can buy ladybirds from eBay. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then you, you just get... You buy ladybirds You buy ladybirds, a packet of a ladybirds, throw them into the system, and they go and sort out... So, so there's actually the no need really to have all these pesticides no. and think, chemicals I think on the plant. I think also too. because I have converted a car park and it's all in pots, it's not where bugs live. Mm. Um, I mean, okay. I, see, I have seen one snail and it took him three days to reach the... <laughs> and it, it's like he had an expedition. <laughs> And we watched him, and there he is, like, trying, and then we found him on a, on a broccoli. Just to, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Took him off a bit of broccoli, put him on a leaf, walked him back over to the field that's 20 metres away, and put him back there. Oh, bless. But we don't, we don't have loads of bugs. When my friend, who's literally around the corner, he's in a garden space, yeah. and he's been eaten alive. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, the other, it's, it's the ones that you think... Like butterflies, they're a nightmare. Yeah. They've, they've said there's been loads more of the white butterflies this year, mm. I forget their name. But they're the actual enemy out of all, all the bugs. They're really? the worst ones because they go in, lay their eggs mm. on the um, broccoli or the cauliflower, mm. and next thing you know, you've got 400 caterpillars munching away at them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. So, there's, a, there's a really great um, book that I'm reading at the moment called A One Straw Revolution. Right. And uh, this is a Japanese farmer who's like kind of uh, revolutionized the way people do farming. And his methods are very zen. So basically, he says that you don't need to do anything to your crops. Yeah, you don't need to till the ground. You don't need to put fertilizer on, chemicals. Um, you just need it to naturally um, uh, grow. And the weeds that will grow around, the insects that will uh, come, be, yeah. come, will naturally build this natural ecosystem that will develop. And if you don't have to do anything. Yeah. And he said, over time, you, you're able to produce more crops than you would if you were just if you were, putting it all if you were yeah. tilling the ground and yeah. just doing the same, the same crop over and over and again. again. He has different crops in different areas and he said it explains that actually it looks like a complete jungle but yeah. it's just it just is what it is and it all supports itself Self, yeah, naturally. Yeah, like a little ecosystem yeah, within itself. Yeah. yeah I mean I've, and the um, soil as well. Apparently the, the soil then has the right nutrients in it yeah. because it's got the animals living in harmony with the with the environment. Yeah. And then the vegetables take the nutrients from the soil. Yeah. So I mean it's it, it's it is important to um, to pick the right soil and get the right soil because I mean the soil and water is the main thing, it's a noticeable difference from when it rains on the plants to mm. what's coming out of the tap mm. um, and I mean some of the, some of the composts um, that you'd get from commercial garden centres are a bit fine and a bit light and you need to sort of mix it with the dirt mm -hmm. itself Yeah. So, so okay. sort of working out what works best for one and then different plants react to different mm, types of soil that's right and yeah so it's all, there's like all these different i mean i have one chili and it's a friend from the ibiza chili company and he sent me this really particular nice chili uh, that he uses for a relish and the plant always looks like it's dying because i mean even the actual chili itself it's got stress lines going around it um, which looks quite odd as it is, but it doesn't matter how much water you, you pour on it, it always looks like it needs a drink. And then the Scotch bonnet's the same, the um, traditional West Indian chilli is used. That is a really light um, coloured in the leaf, and that always looks really sad, it doesn't matter how much you water it, it always looks like it needs another water. Do you, do you think like plants have 
and this is a bit weird, but um, they say some people do talk to their plants. Yeah. And in a minute, we're going we're gonna to talk about the health benefits of actually growing your own vegetables. But do you, do you, you know, when um, I wouldn't they say, have personalities yeah, I, and no, do you talk to I them? Mean, or do you <laughs> I, I wouldn't like say, pets. I mean, yeah, like pets, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, you have spirit, right? Yeah, you've got to have sort of, you're definitely giving those plants your energy. And right. there's, without a doubt, you're passing your energy onto them. And if you don't give them your energy, they die. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's as simple as that. So right, okay. the more you nurture them, and it is just nurture. Mm. It's quite literal. When someone says to me, no, I, I'm that person who oh, I couldn't keep a house plant, not the spider plants or aloe vera or the ones yeah. that, that you just leave and you don't water, you're over water. But with chilies, you can overwater them and they like it to some degree. Yeah. yeah and if you're doing it with um, pots, it all runs out the bottom. So yeah. um, it's probably take me an hour and a half to water the whole plantation. Well, that's uh, so you're doing that every day, but there's also sort of the. So then um, it's kind of good for your. I would say it's good for your body, right? It's good I for your you health. Definitely and get some, well, since the gym shuts. <laughs> gym yeah. shut and um, lugging 11 tonnes of soil around. Wow, yeah, you're yeah. going to get fit, right? Yeah, you get a little bit fit, so there is a workout <laughs> there as well, without a doubt. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, watering it every morning, there's a meditation process. Mm -hmm. If you're looking where you're spraying that water, and then you're judging that plant, how does it look? And you're doing that constantly for an hour and a half, Mm. It's a meditative process, almost yeah. a bit hypnotising. Yeah, yeah. And down, yeah. Once yeah. you start to go into that state, all of a sudden the noise that you did have in your mind starts to dissipate. Yeah. And then when you finish doing that, you felt like you've had a bit of meditation. Yeah. I mean, it's to explain it to um, the people watching from a martial arts perspective. I mean, farming and, and martial arts are so intertwined. Forgive me if I'm wrong, all the weapons are actually old far made from old farming. Yeah, that's true. Exactly, instruments. yeah. Spades and spades. Monk and, yeah. spade. I mean, and, rake. And it goes back to the feudal system of, uh, of farmers and being repressed. And that's where you've learned to defend yourselves. And so, and I think the, there is such a, a relationship Connection, with martial yeah. arts and. and Farming, Zen, mm. the word yeah, Zen is, is, is synonymous of sitting in a mm. garden, do you know what I mean? Yeah. There are so, there are so, many, um, there are so many connections, aren't yeah. there? And this is, um, yeah, you can, you can apply Zen to anything. You can apply Zen to tea or to farming or walking, mm. meditation or any, any aspect of, of your life, I guess. But it's so interesting that you mentioned about how you feel that it helps sort of mental, yeah, mental, it, calms you down. it really calms you down, yeah. stress, this is one of the things we were going to talk about, so we've got some, we've got some facts here about uh, growing food and about how, um, how it can benefit your, sort of your health and well-being and some of the benefits, so we've got a list of seven, seven of them here, and the first one is, um, number one is more nutritious. Right? Yeah. You said it's more nutritious. Yeah, without a yeah. doubt, without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, you have to remember when the, if you're, most of our food comes from Holland. Right, okay. Right, so Holland are the second biggest food producer on the planet, yeah, uh, okay. other than America. But if you look at the size of Holland to America, you can see that their percentage of their population is more into farming than anything else. Right. Um, a lot of our foods are coming from abroad. Very few of them come from, far, say, Riverford, or uh, quite a few other farms. But there's a, a, a diesel um, cost on all of, all of our food, so it travels. Yeah. So even okay. if you're a farmer, let's say you're getting the chilies from Morocco or Israel, when they're out of season, they come from Israel. And if you think about the farmers cut them down, they sit in the farm uh, warehouse two days. Yeah. Okay. The distributor picks them up, yeah. the distributor takes them to their warehouse, puts them into packets, washes them another two, three days. Mm. Then they go into freezers because they need to travel, which then doesn't really help the nutrients at all. It might help with the taste mm. and certain things. Mm. All of a sudden we're into a week. Yeah, so it's and then not they're going out onto 
into Waitrose, Sainsbury's, Tesco's. And then they come sit in their warehouse and then they're put out onto the shelves. Yeah. All of a sudden, the oxidisation of all that process of all the nutrients, you're losing it. Yeah, As exactly. soon as it goes, as soon as it goes. Yeah. Um, so what would you recommend? Fresh anymore, you recommend it? or I think there's lots of um, advice out there saying it's really, really good for you to eat eat seasonably. So yeah. whatever's growing in your local area, um, to, to actually eat eat that eat and that, eat yeah. the produce that's being made in your local area, in your country at least. Yeah, without yeah. a doubt. I mean it, it changes your taste as well. I mean we've because we were talking earlier about how sterile everything is now. Mm. Um, is that you build up this, your taste buds are built up and it's got almost like a conditioning. Yeah. Whereas, for instance, I don't particularly like eating carrots, but I grew some carrots this year and I found that they're probably the most enjoyable thing. <laughs> they're very and sweet. It, yeah, yeah, really sweet. Yeah. And, and after they're roast them with salt and pepper, yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm not a great cook, but I can still, I'm not, in fact, I'm not a great cook. <laughs> Put it a bit more like that. But even if I just put it in there and roast some potatoes that you've grown yourself mm. that have come out of the ground that day, some fresh chives and fresh yeah. mint, mm. that food, food tastes the best food I've ever tasted. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm brilliant. sure there's a psychosomatic thing because it's your food, maybe a little bit of a yeah. placebo there. But still, I'm sure it's more nutritious. Yeah, more nutritious. More nutritious. Yeah. yeah. The so other you th number two is it keeps you active. Isn't yeah. It? So you said yeah you you know if you the thing the thing is is if you growing your own food, which was going to come to a little bit later about how to grow your own food. You know, even if you're living in an urban area, you can just grow something on your windowsill. But we'll talk a little bit about that later. But um, if you you know getting out and about in your garden, you know, um, active, yeah. active. You're kind of you know, moving around mm. and you know, bending, in, down, bending picking forward, up, bending down, picking up. That's like it's great. Yeah, it's, it's definitely really a workout. Great. Yeah. yeah, and it, you said that um, you're out in the sunshine, so you're getting yeah. vitamin D. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. You, is your, you know, you're boosting your immunity. You're bo boosting your cardiac health because you're moving your body around. Um, Stress relief. Yeah, without yeah. That. You mentioned about stress, so things like anxiety, depression. Um, does it make you feel happy when you're out there? Uh, there's definitely a sense of a, accomplishment, uh, it, uh, and, and I'm sure that yeah. releases some serotonin along the way. But yeah. I mean, it's nice to sit down with a drink after you've done your hard work. Say, for instance, mm. you've, you've done a session in training. It's mm. nice to relax afterwards yeah. after your training. Yeah. But you're also relaxing in this thing you've just built. Yeah. So there's yeah. this huge sense of achievement yeah. in there. And, and also, the, something that I found incredibly rewarding, which is something if you had asked me this 10 years ago, I'd have looked at you like that. <laughs> um, it is such a joy to share it with people. Oh, yeah. bless you. It really is. I mean, oh. there's quite a few people in my community now that are like, come on, where is it? <laughs> like, <laughs> so they want to see the, the, yeah, I mean, the end final community. product yeah. as well. The community. Yeah. community. And, and I've That's been amazing. looked after by some of the landladies and landlords of the pubs have been like more than gracious to me and I'm bringing down projects to them and they put it straight on their menu. Oh, uh, you know, then it's amazing. Food you, is then amazing. you've built relationships not only with the landladies, but then with the chefs. Yeah. And yeah. then you get, I got to the stage a couple of years ago where I just walked down to the pub, put some peppers on there, swapped that for a few pints, <laughs> give the chef my own produce, he'd make it up and make the tea. And, it's, and you've just brilliant. gone in there and you've drunk and eaten for free and still sitting in the same environment. Yeah. That, yeah. So that, that's really rewarding. Yeah, that's really rewarding. I mean, yeah. I swapped. Um, I swapped two chili plants for um, my haircut out of lockdown. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. So yeah, she, this, she had had one a couple brilliant. of years ago. And she goes, have you got any more? I said, yeah, do you want to swap one for the chili plant? It's haircut, brilliant. So, yeah. it, built, it definitely builds up a real sense of community. I think that's so important. Mm. It is important. And it's really important for our future as well. Important yeah. for, our, for, the, for the youth. It'd be, you nice to see, it'd be nice to see more allotments or people. I mean, like I said before, I mean, 20 years ago, I can actually remember saying this out loud, saying garden centres are the most boring things in the world. <laughs> I'm like, why do they even exist to one of my friends? Really? Probably went past one, and I'm just thinking, what did I say? <laughs> Take it back. Yeah. Take it back. I mean, something else with the, bringing up the community is that also, if you search around um, 
um, so you said you live in a flat and you've got yeah. a little planter. Mm. If you search around on things like uh, Gumtree, Facebook Marketplace, yeah. I Need a Whisk, there's always people getting rid of pots. Yeah. Especially okay. at certain times of the year, so November's a particularly good time because okay. everybody's finished and everyone's got pots lying around. And you'll see them just on the wayside. Okay. And then you've got people getting rid of topsoil mm. where they've been digging their garden and yeah. that's all free as well. Wow. You can go to the co-op or let's say Riverford or Hello Fresh, something a little bit more organic. Get the seeds out of that pepper, get the seeds yeah. out of that tomato. That's what and stick it in there. Yeah, so all yeah. of a sudden you've had that's very what. little cost. Yeah, that was Gary's brother did this as well. Oh, he really? just took a packet of seeds and kind of put it in and see like a see what grows, you yeah. know. And it's um it's amazing because that's the other thing on our list was that it saves money. Mm. Yeah. I you, mean, I've I have spent money on, on sort of move getting it moving forward and buying all the soil. Mm. I, I, I can't is it expensive that. to set something like that? I mean, like the organic up. soil that I've got is probably 30% more expensive than you'd get just normal compost. Right, okay. But I think you can use it for more than one year just or two, years, three years yeah. without composting it. But if you were just doing something in your garden, you know, for those people out there who like, you know, they, they just want to try it out for the first time. And, I mean, tomatoes, you know. and I think potato, tomatoes are a good one to start with growing because you see the results. And it's really quite, quick. They're, yeah, they're quite easy to <laughs> yeah. grow. I think potatoes are really amazing because they last for a long time. So okay. once you pull them out of the earth, you've got a good few months. I mean, most potatoes are two months old before you eat them anyway in the right, shops. Yeah, yeah, Not unless yeah. they're new potatoes, but um, they last for ages. And also, you can't burn them very quickly. So if you're not a good cook, <laughs> you've got a good half an hour period of putting them in the oven before they can't eat them or you can't eat them. So yeah, that's handy for those that don't cook very well. Yeah, what's your, um, do you have any really good experiences of, of, of growing, growing food? food? Yeah. No, not just eating. <laughs> just eating? <laughs> eating, I only remember, I only remember um, my granddad because he had like vegetable gardens and I loved, I loved the peas. Oh, the like, peas yeah. Get amazing. the peas out. Um, I loved the peas, st strawberries. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, they also had potatoes, but yeah, carrots. I also love carrots. Yeah. Carrots, yeah. peas. Yeah. I think there's such a difference. Like there's it. such a difference in the taste of food when it's come from dirt to plate in a few yeah. hours. It's it does it's taste very, so different. It's very, very different. Yeah. It's really different. And, and I mean, you hear people say that, and it always comes across like a cliche. But yeah. when you actually experience it, yeah. it's just like, hold on yeah. a second. Yeah. What are these chefs? Where do we need chefs? <laughs> what were they all on about? Yeah. It's so good though, like if you've actually grown something, um, like I, I've got something on my windowsill, I've put some some herbs on my windowsill and I've uh, got some coriander and some um, fennel and I put right. it on there just to grow, you know, to add into all yeah. the food and everything. And it's the first time I've ever, I've ever done that. And um, just watching it come up, you, you feel yeah. like, you well, know, it's nurture, so, isn't it? It's it is nurture. like your babies. It yeah, is right. like your baby, my it's baby same, coriander. That's exactly what, yeah. Guilty, like plucking it and like putting it in my food, yeah. you know? Oh no. <laughs> yeah, but I think nature's kind of very giving, isn't it? It's very. Yeah. yeah I think we should natural. all be a little bit more in tune to it. I think we. I know I have. Personally, although I started very much in tune with technology, and which was my. Mm. Not yeah. so much in the sex, in the sense that I'm, um, say, a computer nerd or a geek in that sense, but electronic music has always been really synonymous with electronic instruments and yeah. technology and that cultures which is also one of the reasons why I sort of I need to get back to nature because I'm sitting yeah. around all these machines constantly all the time working yeah. in very rigid structured formats yeah. of what it's supposed to be whereas nature it's just well it's a balance we're off. as well yeah. you, need, yeah. you need the balance as yeah, well right amazing. from your yeah. like nature organic and everything so it's a bit like this yeah. to like something that's super clean and yeah. Um, yeah. industrial, yeah. I, lo I love the fact that if it's it natural, it just does what it wants, like wild, it can just grow yeah. anywhere. You, yeah. like, you know, and then it, it, it just comes up like that, yeah. And obviously it's really great for the environment. It's great for the environment. So if you are growing, you know, like you said with, you know, if you're buying food that is local or you're growing your own food, then you're cutting down on all that transportation and all that. Yeah. Um, 
chemicals that are going back into the soil, that are you know, going into your water supply. So, you know, it's you're quite surprising how much you get from a small space. Mm. Mm. Um, oh, really? How, mu yeah, how much food can you... Okay, so if we had something like this, how much food can we get in something like that? Well, That's quite, it's quite... If you say these small. see four of these squares here... Yeah, yeah okay. Um, if you did the front potatoes, say a quarter of... You'd probably get five or six kilos what? of potatoes if you put them in bags about this high. Whoa, that's quite um, a lot of food. The peppers, if they were padron peppers, from there to there, that same space, over a season, you'd probably get 20 kilos. That's quite a lot of food. Yeah, it, 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 there's, here's the other thing though, it's one thing growing the food, but having it at, when you, at the right time when you're hungry, yeah. or want to eat it, yeah. Or can't store it, so the staggering yeah. is important. Not planting everything on the same day, so yeah. planting it in yeah, uh, stages. Yeah, stages. Yeah. This is what we're going to but come to now because I think it's really important if you are going to go out there and you are going to plant your own food and do your own thing, then we can give you a little bit of advice with Matt here as well. We can give you some advice on some tips on so what's the best how time? to do it. What's, yeah. what's the, the best, best time? time? What do you want to grow? Um, you know, knowing your environment, things like that. So, what what advice would you give if someone was, you know, wanting to start to? So they've never done anything before. Germinating seeds for more or less all the groups that we've got in in the UK is from sort of January to April. So that's the best time to, to plant. Germ no, to germinate. So oh, okay. To plant, I'd ne I never put anything out after the last frost. The so last frost in May. Right, so you get the seed, this, I mean this is basic, yeah. right, you get the seed and you put it in your little, in and that's, that, that means like germinating, yeah, yeah bringing up the, the, yeah, so, um, the sprout. That's kind of window sills, keep everything above sort of 10, 14 degrees. So you could do it on your window, window yeah, sill at home, okay. window sills at home, okay. and then once it gets to a plug or, or a seedling, uh, then you're putting it in a larger pot, but I wouldn't use anything outside. If you put it in a greenhouse, that's cool. Okay. If you heat the greenhouse in January, February, March, April, okay. you can still do it in there. Yeah. Um, it depends what plants, they all sort of react really differently. So They've got their own personalities, yeah? Yeah, I mean, like <laughs> broccoli doesn't like it above 80, degree, 80 degrees and it grows really too quickly um, above 80 degrees and then you're getting a smaller harvest. Yeah, There's okay. loads of, they all react slightly different to different yeah. things. They're like um, us, really, like personality. Yeah, they've they? all got little personalities. Sometimes I like the sun. Yeah. I like the shade. Yeah. You know, this kind I of mean, wasabi grows predominantly in the shade, although some people say they would like 20% sun. But I, I've, I've got wasabi plants that are nowhere near the sun and just about getting light, and they look absolutely fantastic. Wow. And they need running water or water that's been oxygenated quite a lot compared to... Um, some of the chili plants just grow without even Looking any help. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> without any help whatsoever. And then some really struggle, and you have to look after. I mean, it's, yeah. it's all different, and also it changes all the time because of the weather. Yeah. Oh, so right. like um, April and May that we had this year were just incredible. Great for growing lettuces, but yeah. then as soon as that temperature dropped and it rained, a lot of them just started to rot. Oh, because okay. it, it shocks them all and they're not used to it. But yeah. I think growing inside polytunnels and greenhouses is a lot easier. What's the polytunnel? Sorry. Well, a polytunnel just... is the um, semicircle plastic that uh, you see yes, yes, on yes. more of a commercial farm. And obviously yeah. the greenhouse is the glass house. But, um, Why would you use one of those? Uh, I think it has the same effect as like <coughs> the greenhouse. Does yeah. it heat keep everything? Yeah. Yeah. Does it keep insects off? Or? Yeah, it keeps a, le a little less insects. Yeah. They still get in there. Do you do you have any um, do you have any natural um, remedies for insects? Because this other year, insects. other insects. <laughs> they're, they're, they're mates that they don't like. That's that's how you can control them. Like I right. said, aphids for chilies are probably the worst or the biggest. Um, bug and you can buy ladybirds on eBay. Oh yeah, like and you introduce said. them, yeah. introduce them into the aphids, and they go in there and kick their little butts. They say it's a spider for mosquitoes. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, the ladybird spider is even better. I mean, spiders are your friend in the in. If yeah. you see a spider, you look after him in your farm <laughs> because he's going around just 
getting all the Got nasties. Yeah. I, think, I think Martini need to convert soon <laughs> yeah, to a spider. spider friend. Oh, oh, this is really hard for me. Yeah, they, I'm going to have to view them a different way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I've, I, had, I met a grasshopper last night. Did you? And we had him on my finger like this. And he was just totally up for it. A little photo <laughs> with him on there. Oh, and then I took him into the greenhouse and said, go on, help yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Munch away. Yeah, I made a mistake with two butterflies once, but though, this is where you learn really quickly. Yeah. Is I've got a net in for, um, oh, I had some broccoli in there, and I saw these two white butterflies in the netting going, they were trying to get in. I was thinking, oh, how, what harm could it do? This was quite a few years ago. <laughs> and just as I was going to a festival, I poked them both in through the net, said, go on, get yourself for lunch. <laughs> Came back four days later, and the whole of the broccoli lot had just been completely munched by a caterpillar. <laughs> oh, so oh dear! The, the, so actually, oh the, white, my God. the white butterflies are by far the most annoying thing in the garden. Wow! Yeah, my and I know you get upset with them because they sort of they freak out. Yeah, they freak out and like, oh, get out of it! And <laughs> you see them like totally know they're upset. You. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant. Well, we've um, um, th there obviously there are so many more things that we could talk about. I mean, this is quite a quite a large subject. And if if you guys are interested out there and you want us to continue talking about them, you know, soil, and I'm sure Matt would be really happy to come back in again and, and talk. We only have half an hour today to have a chat with you guys, and I think we've gone quite a lot over already. Um, so we're just going to kind of Janine, maybe you can just do like a small recap on on. Um, so just do like a little small summary, yeah, yeah so. small summary on growing your own food and things like <laughs> okay. that. Okay, so I think um, I would say obviously it's good to grow your own food because um, we said it had like lots of health benefits, lots of um, other benefits. I mean, we, we, as we said like two generations ago, our grandparents, they grow their own food. They, they knew how to survive on this. It's like yeah. kind of get, get in touch with nature again a bit. Um, it's good to know where your food Have a good from. balance, have a good balance on your life, even if you also sit in the computer or on the computer all day or um, live in a city. It's always good to get out because it's like physically and also mentally good for you. Mm. Um, Taste-wise, you get you get yeah. some yeah. really good products. Really rewarded, yeah. So and it's cheap. So you yeah. get rewarded by <laughs> having really nice food that you like, really probably new tastes that you never tasted before if you haven't yeah. grown organically. And also for your self-achievement, I mean, is I think it's probably really fantastic if you from like a tiny little seed, seed yeah. you go what yeah. happens um, like, and what can come of it. Definitely boost your self-confidence, your self-esteem, yeah, right? Yeah. And then also um, what, what we just said, mentioned is, and what I really liked is kind of you, it, the, like the community part of it. Mm. Yeah, Sense like, of sharing as well. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you That's share. That's very rewarding. Everyone's really happy yeah. to eat nice food for exactly. free. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you share, you, you grow your community and I mean, we're all social beings as well. So yeah. it's like, um, yeah. that's, that's, that's right. really nice. And isn't you're it? supporting your environment, you're getting in touch with nature and um, you kind of feel, it kind of gives you, also gives you a sense of, um, you know, bringing back your, 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 your sovereignty, yeah, is your right to be able to grow food and to understand where it comes from and for the future generation to be able to do the same as yeah. well, yeah. yeah. So, so, what I would like to say as well is what I'll wait for your harvest, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> My corn on the cob is coming, it's that big now. Yeah. Yeah. It's growing, it's yeah. growing. Yeah. I've got one. One. <laughs> yeah, one like that. Yeah. I'm like, please grow, come on, yeah. you can do it. September, exactly. that come up. September, exactly. oh, so I think. <laughs> my bid would be I need to start doing something maybe start with tomatoes as yeah. you said if it's I, the easiest ones I do feel yeah. very inspired listening mm. to you yeah. actually and <laughs> I'm, I hope you guys out there feel inspired you know like yeah. you're saying you don't have to you don't have to go out there and create your own farm you know yeah Matt, you did it, it so it's in baby steps and, yeah. and, and it's, On your don't, don't do yourself um, too much uh, harm in, in, in or frustration or expecting everything to go because you yeah. are um the, the weather dictates it all to you, really. Yeah. 
So um, it's a bit trial and error. Yeah, trial well, and error, yeah. but don't get yeah. too frustrated. Yeah. And I think it is a lot easier than you ever expect. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's not a difficult thing to do. It's, it's something really primal that we've been doing for five, 6,000 years, and we're the first two generations not to do it. Yeah. Wow, Matt, okay. that's amazing. Okay, well, um, I think on that note, that powerful message there, I think <laughs> we will leave our, our talk. Um, so if you... If you've enjoyed the talks today and you would like to uh, learn more about what we were talking about, if you've got any advice that you give, if you, if you grow your own vegetables as well or you'd like to leave your comments, then please do let us know. Um, we've got websites as well that you can follow, lots of information that you can get. Um, and this is the, called the, the Shaolin Talk. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you again um, next Saturday at 12 o'clock for okay. our next topic. Thank you, Matt, for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.